welcome everyone who's uh, watching and uh, I want to thank um, the panelists this morning that are here to join me. I've got uh, Councillor Debbie Sherwood, who is also uh, the council representative on the on the, our local BIA. I have Allison Scheel, who's the uh, uh, director of, uh, of our BIA. And uh, this morning we have Rodney Huff, who uh, is a former president of our local BIA and also uh, uh, a small business consultant and an entrepreneur here in Orangeville. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Yeah. Um, what I what I usually do with these is just kind of do a quick uh, around the table and just uh, ask everybody how they're doing with uh, coping with COVID-19 and, and the uh, disruption to our lives. Uh, just wondering how things are going personally and uh, with your with your work life. So, Debbie, do you want to jump in and give us a little update? Sure, Your Worship. Uh, first of all, definitely uh, different times for all of us. Um, here's an example where we're doing meetings virtually. I'm uh, starting to learn to adjust to that as our, our new way of life. Um, as far as home, I can't believe that we have been in these times for over a month now. It's, um, you know, quite something that uh, it has gone on this long and unfortunate to be continuing. But other than that, uh, doing well and, like I say, adjusting to these uh, these types of meetings during these times um, is definitely uh, something that, uh, you know, I, I look forward to getting back to to uh, connecting with, with my peers in person again. Right. Um, have you been receiving um, emails in your uh, position as counselor from people uh, about their concerns? Um, very little. I get the odd phone call and, and everything, but I think in general, most people are, you know, adhering to the rules that are coming, not just from local government, but all the way up to, you know, our, our, uh, our chief medical officer. So um, I can honestly say that I... You know, I have been getting a few. Um, the odd one has been the small, you know, some small business owners. And uh, it's nice to be able to uh, refer them to uh, the other resources where they need to go uh, to get some information. Because, you know, at the beginning, everything was so uncertain, right? Where they could get funding, this and that. So now things are starting to come together. And as we all know, the, the government's announcing, making new announcements almost daily. Right. Great, thank you. So, Allison, how's your family coping with all of this? Uh, and uh, what are the new things that uh, are part of your reality now? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's it, you know, I guess in large part, my life hasn't changed a lot. I mean, I'm working from home instead of going into the office. My husband is still going to the office every day. My 16-year-old daughter, instead of being extremely busy and never home, is hold up in her bedroom and comes down to eat a couple of times a day and that's pretty much it um but it's 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 actually been kind of nice because our relationship has i mean it's always been very good but now we're even closer than we were before so that's really really nice and so we've had lots of time to to talk and to you know to enjoy each other's company so that's great um my son lives in kitchener um he's still at school so um we're missing him but you know, um, we're coping with that. It's not it's not like he's on the other side of the country or anything. So we've had a couple of Zoom dinners and stuff. That's been kind of fun. Um, right. But for the most part, I, I started something new. I started um, volunteering at the food bank one day a week. So that's been a really eye opening. Um, and it's really changed. Uh, I, I mean, I always knew the food bank was important. But now it's, you know, I think about it much more often than I used to. Every time I go to the grocery store, I think about it. And, you know, I, I am much more aware um, uh, that there are so many people in need in our community, especially now. So uh, that's really been eye opening. But other than that, um, and I, I've put on the COVID-19, I think, but, <laughs> but we'll cope with that after we're all said and done. But no, generally speaking, and my day has really, my business day, I, I really need to start creating boundaries for myself because it starts in the morning and it goes until, you know, the wee hours of the morning. So right. that, that has been different, but, you know, Good. I'm sure I'm not well, the only one. Well, on Monday, um, we're going to have Heather Hayes, the uh, executive director of the food bank, on uh, our coffee chat. And uh, we're going to talk about food security or insecurity, as it may be, in some people's lives, and also about supply chain. I'm, I'm trying to get one of the local grocery store managers on board. And I have Councillor Todd Taylor, who in his uh, day job is the director of sales for Dare Foods. So he uh, for for United States, so he's he's um, really embedded in uh, in the supply chain in the grocery area. So it'll be interesting to get some perspective from uh, from Todd uh, as he continues to work. I, I think he 
he said their sales, for instance, for his products have spiked incredibly. I think, I think he said they were up something like forty percent in in the last month, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, anyway, it'd be interesting to hear what he's got to say as well as uh, Heather and and you know, there's been some recent posts on Facebook about um, some of our local grocery uh, frontline workers. Some of it very positive and and some negative, and um, we need to make sure that people treat these people with respect. Um, they're doing the best they can under some very trying circumstances. So we'll get into that a little bit more on Monday. But thanks, Allison. Rodney, um, how are you today, sir? Um, you've got lots going on. Uh, uh, I know you've got some. There was a construction project I think you're involved in, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're also being. Um, um, you know, looked at to provide some advice for some of your small business clients. And uh, how are you and your family coping at this point in our COVID crisis? Uh, I think we're, we're, we're coping really well. I'm hoping that you can hear me well enough, uh, but um, great family cooking, lots of reading going on, lots of chatting. I think we're having more family time than we've ever had uh, ever. So from, from a personal perspective, it's uh, it's a neat change and to be chatting and cooking and cleaning and working together uh -huh. from a business perspective. I think at the moment we're in a spot where people are feeling like I wish this would be over and I want to tell the business people that we're close to being to another change to the other side, but uh, just be patient. Uh, we need to stay in the time that we're at. We're here for a reason, so we just need to find the goodness in the time that we're at. And getting out of it's coming, but let's not rush too much right now. Uh, still lots of anxiety coming up, lots of people feeling nervous, they're feeling uh, uncertainty. And the certainty is we're gonna make it through this, there's no question. Right. So um, I'm finding that most of the calls and the work that I'm doing with clients right now are on the uncertainty level because we're four and a half, five weeks in, and they're just thinking, man, if you could just tell me when the end is, it'll make it a little bit easier on me. And yeah. uh, it's coming, it's soon. Yeah. So back, uh, gosh, it's it's probably three weeks ago now, Rodney, when we had that town hall meeting that you were involved in. And uh, you and um, Louis Sappy, another uh, local chartered accountant and business advisor, sort of gave us some uh, very um, interesting and um, um, factual uh, thoughts about what what businesses need to do right now and some of it was you know the silver lining uh, one silver lining is more family time as uh, both you and Allison mentioned and but also the ability for small businesses to look at their at, at their past performance and look at uh, their business plans and to look look uh, do a deep dive into their into their business and their finances and uh, determine what they need to do to be successful coming out of this. So uh, that was a, that was a, a really uh, important piece of information that was put out there to our, our small business community. You know, I want to think about, you know, how we're going to come out of this. And uh, the County of Dufferin, for instance, has already appointed uh, Daryl Keeney, their economic development uh, um, director, uh, as the lead for their recovery plan. And, you know, I don't know if it's too early to start thinking about it, but I'd like to start thinking about recovery. And um, Rodney, what do you think about recovery? And what, what do we, what do small businesses need to do? And what, what does the town need to do to help them? Have you got any thoughts on that? Well, uh, recovery is what we're to be thinking about right now. So, you know, at any stage we need to be, uh, getting ready for when we're opening back up and it's going to be in stages and it's going to be uh, not at 100% occupancy right away but uh, everything has shifted and um, the communication how you communicate uh, with your clients is going to change I think um, for restaurants themselves uh, people aren't going to want to be uh, in super busy environments just out of the get-go so there's going to be a mental shift uh, we just need to guide through that. So have your ready restaurant that, uh, you know, you've taken uh, the tables between tables out and made it more welcoming. Um, uh, as far as an economic 
standpoint, when we went through that last meeting, we've had some really good uh, support put out to us by the government and uh, they've lowered um, some of the thresholds so that uh, um, businesses that weren't doing as much labor are now applicable for it. So they've got uh, financial relief. Now I think the shift that we need to get through because the turnaround's coming is they need to be in a mental relief. You really got to get yourself figured uh, uh, what action steps you need to take to mentally be ready for when we're opening back up. And it's not going to be the same as it was before. So get comfortable with that. It's going to be different. Yeah. Uh, the way that we communicate different. Uh, there's going to be a lot more pickup and people maybe having dinners for six and heading home. So um, some neat changes coming. You know, I remember when smoking came in and they said no more smoking in restaurants and everybody thought it was going to cripple restaurants and coffee shops were going to go out of business. And what you saw happen was shifts. And look at Tim Hortons, for example. At that time, you would go in and spend, uh, you know, 95 cents on a coffee when smoking came in. And now their check average and number of stores is equal to McDonald's. You wouldn't have seen that shift happen. The reason I bring that up is change is coming. You need to be fluid. We need to be thinking different and we need to be comfortable with change. So right. we're, we're not that far away from getting back up and running. So right. prepare now. Yeah, Allison, thank you, Rod. Um, Allison, um, there there have been some programs and continuing programs that the government has offered. I know uh, you were involved in um, that digital Main Street um, funding that came through. Some of our Broadway businesses took advantage of it, but also there's some resources with uh, our economic development department and the small business uh, center that we have. What do you um, recommend small businesses do now as far as uh, looking at resources and uh, learning more about uh, what's available through the government? Yeah, yeah, so we recommend that all of our small business owners take advantage of every single learning opportunity out there to them. And and most of it is free. Um, like I, I am I am I am really pleasantly surprised by how much people are willing to offer at no charge from a member to member. So some we have a bookkeeper who's offering advice to our members for free. Um, but speaking to the economic development um, resources on the town's website, they're fantastic. Digital Main Street is also there, even though the grant itself has been closed and we're hoping hoping the um, the government will actually renew that grant process because I think it was a great. All of the learning opportunities for that are still available on, on Digital Main Street um, and we continue to uh, encourage our members to take advantage of those. Um, the BIA itself is going to be offering free uh, marketing support for our membership as well and that's a program that will be starting sometime late next week. Um, so there are there are lots of opportunities and we continue to share those with our members on our our, our member Facebook page on our website um, via email, you know, there's but take advantage of everything that's available to you. And I, I know some members are busier than others. They're busy working on their businesses instead of in their businesses right now. And so this is the time to take that take take the time. Give yourself an hour every day for learning and expanding your horizons. Right. Both personal um, and business. Yeah. Right. And and there's also, you know, an opportunity. I know some some small businesses in town are doing some uh, minor renovations. I uh, I did a pickup at Coriander Kitchen the other day and I noticed they put a new floor in and they so those kind of renovations are not something that you can normally do in the course of uh, running a restaurant. It, it requires closing. So they've they've had an opportunity there. It's a bit of a silver lining for them to uh, refresh their uh their premises. So uh, it's just one example of uh, um, something that, that one company, uh, one small business has done here in town. Um, Debbie, you know, we're talking about recovery plans and, um, you know, I, I guess the town's going to be involved and you have any thoughts about how we might be able to um, help, help small businesses as we come out of this, how the town can partner. Uh, have, you, have you put any thought into it at all? 
Well, definitely we'll take advantage of any type of programs that are, are offered, uh, you know, starting from the federal government down. And um, as far as the municipality, obviously we're going to provide as much guidance and, and assistance as, as possible. Um, I have myself seen some businesses that actually shut right down, starting to slow, slowly reopen because they've now um, started to um, to make changes um, within their within their own organizations. I do want to make one uh, shout out to Allison and her team uh, for reaching out to the BIA members themselves and offering all these great opportunities for shop of Shopify and and uh, our uh, provider to uh, help these businesses that maybe didn't have websites or were computer savvy to get their their wares and their and their uh, their um, businesses online because you know like the big um monster monster amazon um you know they need to get their products on there and and uh, and have it known so i think if the town can assist any business whether it be bia or any right up to our lar our large manufacturers uh we, we're going to be there to guide them as much as we can but um i see the recovery as rodney alluded to we will probably do it slowly like like and and this is going to be a mindset that all of us will be out once we do get back out there to reality i think we still need to be mindful of the, <clears throat> of the social distancing and um i think this is going to go on for for many many months and uh like i said uh, we got to take advantage of funding opportunities and all other other any type of assistance that we can provide yeah. I wonder if um, this is going to, you know, come down to new um, building code uh, and, and about spacing of tables in a restaurant. You know, Rodney alluded it to, to it yesterday. Um, people feel crowded in a restaurant. Now this this whole uh, issue of, of physical distancing is now part of our reality. And, uh, you know, you wonder if restaurants are going to have to rethink their their financial uh plans with with respect to seating and uh hopefully they can pick up with with takeout you know uh this is a small part of some restaurants business and it, it may they may have to uh do more marketing of of the takeout in order to pick up sales rodney do you have any thoughts on that is it well i think that there's going to be uh when the momentum starts when we get going again um we just need to be uh, understanding that this too will pass. We're going to get back to regular occupancy in restaurants, but it might take three months, six months. Don't forget, we got December coming up, and it's it, we're very social in nature. So yes, we're going to be a little bit apprehensive, but there will be some momentum. So it's just reading that momentum. I think the three things that we need to get uh, business people to start thinking about is knowing about things is not owning things we got to start studying more reading more learning more there's a momentum that we're coming up to that they could grab onto you need momentum certainty and take massive action so if people are feeling uncomfortable set your restaurant up so they feel comfortable and then as time goes on as social beings we're going to get back to i'm not going to call it normal but we're going to get back to pretty good occupancy if we start off and we're at 50%, it's not going to be long before we're at 80% occupancy. Mm -hmm. Now, from a small business perspective, we have a chance right now to look at our expenses. We have a chance to look at our business as a whole and our employees and, and, and really starting to work our mindset as to where am I going, how am I going to get there, and what do I need to make it happen? We're going to, it's going to work. We will lose some businesses throughout this process, but the majority of them are going to be here because they're good, resilient business owners. Right. And, you know, I think there's there's countries around the world that don't have the financial resources and capability of, of Canada, and they're going to be hit a lot harder um, than we are. I think we're going to be one of the countries that's going to come out of this you know, faster than than most other countries because of those resources. And I I, I need to you know tip my my hat because I think both the uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and 
Premier Ford and, and the programs that they put out there, they've put a lot of thought into it. And I think um, a lot of people have been able to take advantage of it, both small business people and just the average um, citizen in, in, uh, in Canada. And they haven't left too many gaps there. Most people have been, um, have been thought about and, and um, uh, you know, have a program that they can tap into. So um, uh, hats off again to them. So yeah, just, uh, just to uh, to uh, add to what you're saying, your worship, I'm I'm very um, I'm very impressed with the government on every day kind of revisiting things and what more can we add? And when they when you know when the prime minister gets up there and said we're looking at giving some type of rent relief to small business owners and stuff like that, we know then that they are taking the concerns of not just the residents but businesses and students. And so this is a daily chore for them. And and I, like I say, kudos to all levels of government for thinking outside just one, you know, circumstance. Yeah. I'm glad we have a federal leader that's not recommending uh, injection of Lysol disinfectant. <laughs> Crazy. Craziness. Look, I think we've been living in a time where... Things have been going really well for the last 11 years, and we tend to not be uh, as disciplined from a financial perspective. When, when we talk about the certainty or uncertainty, things have changed. So financial discipline is going to be the leader, the, the lead role in all small businesses. This is not unhealthy. This is absolutely healthy. You're absolutely right. The help that the government is providing is excellent but it stops there and it starts with the owners understanding more about their finances. Giving the help is awesome. Two kudos, two kudos, heads up, it's great. But if we don't as business owners stop and re-look at how we've been living the last 10 years, how we've been spending in the last 10 years, we've been thinking about sales and not about expenses. The right. shift is here, the time for change, we're in. Yeah. Stay um, in it, good. We're, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to just follow up on that, Rodney. You know, I think um, the importance of good planning, good business plans, I think you're going to find landlords going to be uh, more cautious and, and uh, looking at the business plans of tenants coming into their spaces. I think um, there's going to be a little more uh, requirement now for uh, a really comprehensive business plan that, that a landlord's going to look at. Because you you can't just show up and move in without you know it's just it's painful because there's been a, a few businesses on Broadway that have come and gone inside of six months and it's it's because they haven't done the proper due diligence and and put a reasonable business plan in place. Sorry, right. Your Worship, I'm having difficulty hearing you on that, but you've talked about business plans. The yeah. business plan is awesome, but what what business people, uh, small businesses need to do is to look at three things. You've got to stay in touch with your cash flow statement. Cash flow is king. Cash flow is the reason you're running the business. The second statement you're going to look at is your balance sheet. Your balance sheet is telling you where your money is and what your debt is and what your debt load is. And the last thing is your profit and loss. And the profit and loss is your revenue coming in, less your expenses equals what you have left over. Now, in most cases, small businesses look at the profit and loss statement, but it's the third one that you need to look at. Cash flow is king, and if we start shifting from being in the last 10 years have been awesome and we haven't been financially disciplined, rather than the uh, business plan, we just need to look at three simple things. Cash flow, balance sheet, and profit and loss. And if landlords are requesting those, I think... That's awesome because it will make the small businesses start to pay attention and start to read the numbers. Business is just about numbers. It's impartial, it's impersonal, it's just about the numbers. Right. Um, so the federal infrastructure minister, uh, Catherine McKenna, made a statement a few days ago that uh, municipalities should start looking at infrastructure projects yeah. because... And they're they're going to have a stimulus package to get the economy back rolling again. So some of the things that that our town has got uh, on the horizon, and Allison, you might want to speak to this, but we we're already starting to talk about the parking garage, uh, 
slash commercial building potential across the road from Town Hall. Uh, we were talking about Alexandra Park um, public square revitalization. We're talking mm -hmm. about our sidewalks and the new streetscape that uh, is going to be designed coming up in the next few months. Things like the, the Hanson Road Bridge that uh, Councillor Sherwood and I get um, you know, uh, notes about from time to time that's been percolating for a number of years. Um, these kind of things are, uh, will help. Um, and, and I've already talked to Mr. Brennan and, and some of the town staff this week, but let's have our ducks in a row and let's be shovel ready. In, in fact, Rodney, the, the long-term care facility that is on the property that, uh, that you, that you, uh, used to own, um, is one of those projects and we need to make sure that our planning department has all of its ducks in a row so that we can tell the owners of that of that uh project the primate care people that yes we're ready because i think long-term care is going to uh, be the recipient of a gob of money because it's really um it's 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 the epicenter of this problem right now and things like uh, separating our seniors into single rooms and double rooms rather than an award style uh, where infection can run rampant through a through a facility is going to be all kinds of money is going to be poured into the long-term care system so we need to be able to say to ms mckenna or anybody at the province hey this project right here we can start tomorrow and uh so we need to get those things uh rolling so let's just go around the table one more time. Debbie, um, just want to have one final statement of encouragement and positivity, hopefully, that, uh, I, again, I think we're a strong town. We do, we do have some reserves. We, uh, we got a lot, of, a lot going for us here in Orangeville. We're the, kind of the economic hub of Dufferin County, and uh, there's lots of good things that we, we have in the future here. So if I you want agree. To yeah. I agree. And I'm very glad that you mentioned about being, uh, infrastructure. We we have to be shovel ready or we're ready to roll. And then and this will just um, do a domino effect. You know, once we get the infrastructure up and running, then that brings, brings business back to us. Just to just to reach out one quick statement to our small business owners. If you know, if you are feeling that you're struggling in any way and need any type of guidance, I can tell you we have wonderful staff available at our BIA board. If you're if you're in the BIA area, if you're outside of the BIA area, we would still help you anyway um, if you want to reach out to us. But you've got the great uh, resources of our economic development at uh, orangevillebusiness.ca. You've got DBOT and then all levels to the provincial rate right up to the federal level. So there, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of these people because we are there to all help each other we're in this together absolutely allison do you want to add on to that at all uh <laughs> well well debbie has said that very eloquently and and you know and, and i and i agree with her so take advantage of every opportunity whether it's um business resources loan like anything that you can that works for your business educate yourself Take it an opportunity to learn, expand your business in any way. Look outside the box. Don't think traditionally, think outside the box. Um, jump on board if you're a BIA member with our new uh, online marketplace. You'll be receiving information about that. Please contact us about that. Um, so there's those opportunities. Uh, but I, I agree with you that, um, you know, infrastructure stimulus packages will will probably be coming uh, to municipalities. Um, and we've got lots of great ideas for downtown starting at Highway 10 and what can be done to improve um, the look of Orangeville from the highway to encourage people to get off the highway and come and see us because I think that's a big part of our, our issues. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot can be done with the, e sorry, the east end of Broadway. Um, and then in the Heritage Core, our, um, the sidewalk redevelopment project can really be expanded to include a whole streetscape um, yeah. redevelopment like i mean let's look at it as a whole and not just piecemeal and i think we've been doing a lot of that just because there hasn't been a lot of money um, but if money is coming uh this gives us a great opportunity to make our downtown really something quite i mean we're already special but this could just really put us over the top so if we had that opportunity i would love to take advantage of it and you know the public plaza um that would be i think that would be a huge addition to our community not just to encourage visitors to come but for our for our community itself for our locals to come and enjoy our spending time in our community enjoying each other's company um enjoying what 
what our community has to offer as a whole and not just, you know, kind of, you know, at that end of town or this end of town, but as a center of a place to all come together and enjoy each other's company yeah. with some social distancing. while well, we need to do that. <laughs> Let's just make sure that I said that out loud. Yeah. So I, I think there are a lot of opportunities coming. Yeah. I, I had a chance last summer to uh, go to Alora and uh, right in their downtown core, They've got um, a parquet there that that's just wonderful. They're mixing uh, some sculpture there. They've uh, they've got some Muskoka chairs out, some uh, rockery and beautiful landscaping, and uh, it's a really uh, a breath of fresh air right in the downtown core of Alora. And we need we need something like that uh, here as well. So looking forward to pushing that project forward and uh, you know through through council discussion and again if we can have sort of a, a basic plan and maybe some of these infrastructure dollars that everybody's talking about, maybe we can grab some of those and help push this project along. So Rodney, I'll give you the last uh, uh, thought here. Um, you know, I, again, I, you know, I want to dwell on, on positivity. I think people need to uh, think positively about how we're going to come out of this and that we are going to get back to, to normal. You've already mentioned it, but can you give us some final thoughts? Uh, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. Hope you can hear me well again. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, Allison's speaking about where we're going, how we're going to get there, uh, all the movement forward. And at the end, you talked about social distancing. We're going to get back to life again and it's coming. So the two things that I want small businesses to get going to is prepare in advance. You've got time right now to get prepared. We need to come out of the gate ready to go mentally, physically, emotionally. So let's prepare. And then if you planned it out, you're going to be ready for it. So at this stage right. here, you've got all the financial support that you've been uh, requesting from the government, but now it's up to you. Now it's up to the individual to be ready for the next step. Money itself isn't going to help us. It's planning and preparing that's going to get us through the next few phases. By the way, the town of Orangeville is amazing and it's a very attractive market and I do think that uh, we've got to step ahead of other towns in the sense of what we have. Uh, we've got a blessed place to live. We've got great business owners. We're going to make it through this. Let's get ready for the startup coming. It's coming soon. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So just want to thank everybody for joining me this morning. Um, great, uh, great conversation. And, uh, I hope those that are watching at home, uh, you know, picked up on the positivity. We're we're coming, you know, to the to the end of hopefully of of the major part of this healthcare scare. I know that uh, that it's it's going to linger for some time. Uh, I think the focus on safety of our long term care facilities is paramount. We've uh, we've seen the numbers now. It seems like seventy percent of these deaths that have occurred have happened in long term care facilities. So. The government really is going to have to look at uh, at their hygiene protocols and and the enter and exit of staff and visitors to these facilities forever. And uh, we're going to have to change how how people interact, unfortunately, with our seniors. Uh, so that that's going to be a, a focus going forward. But um, I just hope that uh, that uh, you know the protocols that are that are coming forward and. Uh, things that the science, the science community is looking at now, uh, testing for antibodies to sort of prove that you, you, you haven't, uh, that you've been immunized uh, against this disease. All of these kind of testing protocols are going to help us uh, move forward as soon as possible. So again, thanks again for everybody this morning. Um, it's good talk about uh, the business community in Orangeville and uh, we've got lots to, to be thankful for and lots to look forward to. And again, all the best, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sandy. Okay, Have a great day, everyone. Take Bye. care.